Ren, Jonas and Alex being on a ferry to an island known as the Edwards Island talk about life and their own personal affairs. Jonas being the new addition to the group is revealed to be the new stepbrother to Alex who in fact met each other earlier this day with the time being 8pm. Alex's mother married Jonas's father whose mother seemingly died in a tragedy with not much being revealed about it. On the other hand, when asked how Ren and Alex met each other, the talk out of Ren takes the lead in explaining how they met in grade school and have been friends ever since. So, how do you two know each other? Oh, from way back when, like Paleozoic, grade school era. Young enough that I've seen her in a bathtub and it wasn't sexual at all. I mean, we both looked like little skinned potato blobs. <laughs> and to date, that's still what I think she looks like under her clothes. Ren, Jonas and Alex are seemingly going to the islands as an annual bash on the beach, taking Jonas with them to introduce him to the rest of their friends. After touching down at the island's port, Jonas asks Alex for some time to talk to her privately as they were rushed into meeting each other and Jonas had to move in without having much time to talk. Jonas thanks Alex for being cool about everything and inviting him to the group which leads the conversation to Jonas's mother having died and Alex's brother dying in a tragedy as well, which ends the conversation abruptly, neither of them yet being open enough to discuss such deep and emotional topics. Ren then joins the conversation explaining every little detail that there is to anything, explaining how only one person lives in this island called Mrs. Maggie Adler an elderly lady who was involved in the military operation of the island, which used to be a military base which has long been decommissioned ever since, instead being an abandoned tourist attraction now. Ren continues that he asked Alex to bring a manually dialed radio with her as he wanted to show Jonas something really cool, a strange phenomenon that specifically happens in the island's caves, with strange frequencies being picked that do not exist, theorizing that it might be from aliens or even and ghosts as strange stoic sounds are heard. Exploring the island, they soon come across a memorial statue which has been erected to commemorate the victims of a sunken submarine named the USS Kanaloa, which was reported to have been hit with a Japanese sub-chaser in 1943 during World War II. Kanaloa is the name given to the submarine, but interestingly, it soon is unveiled that the story relates to the Hawaiian epics and mythology, where Kanaloa is the god of ocean and underworld who become the ruler of Earth after the first it spit out by gods rebel against them but ultimately get cast down to earth after it separates from heaven. Moving further down into the island, the group uses a dumpster to climb over a fence to walk through the unpaved path to the forbidden beach, when Ren opens up about a girl he likes whom they are about to catch up to closer to the beach. Ren asks Alex to be cool about it and not to make things awkward so maybe he can head it off with her and get lucky. And lucky in a sense of getting into a relationship relationship with her. Meeting up with the only two other people who came here for the beach bash or the annual tradition, Nona comes off as a shy and nice girl but on the other hand, Clarissa as bitter and mean for some reason really hating Alex. When asked, Ren explains that others had to cancel with only Alex and Jonas managing to come, which Clarissa doesn't hold back expressing how disappointed she is that she is stuck with Alex and her stepbrother, even though it's the first time she's meeting Jonas but anything or anyone who is remotely associated to Alex seems to trigger and annoy Clarissa. Clarissa, we... <laughs> we took the last ferry. I thought more would show up, but... <laughs> oh my god, it's just Alex and her new stepbrother? Huh, <laughs> that's it. That's who you brought. That's the group. Clarissa, seriously, who even invited you? Uh, I did. Ren invited Nona and Nona invited me. Though, begged me would maybe be the better way to put it. Uh, I didn't. I didn't really beg. Wait, aren't you all, like, friends? I'm friends with Nona, and I'm downgrading Ren to, like, a creepy neighbor. And you I just met. <laughs> yeah, I'm hey, getting... what about me? What about you? Oh, I get it. I'm not even on the spectrum. You see, Jonas, normally this is like a 20-deep rager, but 
Pat had a party last weekend, and... And a bunch of kids got caught TPing the school. Arriving at the beach, which has been already bonfired by Nona, she explains that many others who were supposed to come were caught after TPing the school, with many others cancelling for other reasons. Being the only people left here, seemingly last time being able to meet up as many of them will graduate. Jonas brings up Maggie Adler and visiting her state, when Clarissa brings the news that she heard on news that she died three days ago, with the island being officially and fully abandoned and uninhabited now. As they start settling at the beach, drinking some beer and spending the night away, Nona suggests a game called Truth or Slap, which, as you guessed, means if anyone answers with a lie, gets a slap. As Clarissa presses Ren about liking Nona, he gets embarrassed and to not mess it up, he lies that he thinks of her as a friend when Alex spills the beans, slapping Ren as a result which makes him feel embarrassed. But nonetheless, it seems to kind of work out for sending the message and making Nona realize Ren likes her. Either way, Ren doesn't appreciate it that Alex exposed him, as he wanted to take his own time and make it play out as he wants to, instead of Alex taking the lead, thinking she's doing him a favor, treating him like a child who can't speak for himself. The game continues with it leading to Clarissa's turn again who presses Alex on a very personal and emotional topic, asking why her parents got divorced, being bitter and resentful for something Alex seems to have done to her. Alex unveils that her parents divorced after Michael, her brother died, which broke everything and they simply couldn't handle it. Clarissa, having had been in a relationship with Michael when he died, seems to hold a grudge against Alex for his death, blaming her and hating her for that. Hence why she has been so mean since the beginning and it is soon revealed that she wasn't as bitter and annihilistic as now, breaking all of her friendships with people, being seemingly still hung up on Michael, especially as he died in a tragedy. Meanwhile, Nona takes this chance to take a photograph of everyone to commemorate this amazing meeting, when Jonas decides he has enough playing this game, with Ren suggesting to go into the caves and tune in into the strange frequencies that he talked about earlier. As Jonas, Ren and Alex decide to do so, a ray of light starts beaming through the dark cave after they hit a certain frequency. They keep on repeating this at certain spots of the cave which are marked, when strange ghostly sounds are heard, as if these ghosts are suffering in some sort of an underworld. That's when a source of light starts emitting deeper in the cave when Jonas takes the lead and goes deep into the cave. Alex being worried about him follows him right after, with Ren getting scared, deciding to stay behind. Time being 10pm right now, Alex catches up to Jonas, being mesmerized by the beauty inside the well-lit cave, who says he thought that he hurt someone. Inside the cave, Jonas and Alex stumble upon an old closet, which doesn't have any place to be there, as it would be near impossible to take it through the tight passageways of the cave, and it wouldn't make much sense to do so. Starting to become intrigued, they find a floating triangle, which they think could be a trick of light or whatever Ren was talking about. When Alex uses the radio tuning into different frequencies, when this little triangle expands to three more, opening what seems to be a gateway to cosmos or different dimensions. That's when the radio starts clipping different parts of reports and announcements to communicate with Alex, greeting her and telling her if their leave is possible, as if indicating they are stuck in a different dimension or even underworld. Linking this to the story of the spit out spirits being cast down to earth ruled over by Kanaloa, the god of the oceans. That's when the reality distorts, teleporting Jonas and Alex to the bottom of the sea, observing remains and debris of some sort of marine vehicle sinking deep, when Alex wakes up, finding herself close to the island's radio tower. Alex! What? 
Time being 11 p.m. now, Alex and Jonas wake up inside an electric fenced area, which confuses them to how they managed getting inside, having no recollection of how they went there. They decide to climb the communication tower known as Harden Tower, named after the tower attendee who was named Major Dick Harden, in order to disable the electric fence so they can look for their friends. As they do so, the phone inside the tower starts ringing, with Ren being on the other side, informing them that he had a similar experience to them, blacking out and finding himself on a different part of the island, being in the relay point of the forest. As they speak some more, they receive another call, this time from Clarissa who also blacked out, waking up in another part of the island, being in Fort Melner, the main base for the military operation during World War II. No, like I said, I must have like passed out or I don't know how I ended up here. Wait, I, I, I think that's the other line. Maybe it's like a night watchman or something. Or they do like check-ins maybe. What's that? Wait, Ren, someone's calling on the other line. Just hold on a minute. I'm gonna see who it is. Okay, but make it quick, seriously. Hello? Oh, Jesus Christ. Alex? Why are you answering it? This... It says it's an emergency line. Where are you right now? Clarissa? And Jonas is with you. Of course he is. I'm in the comm tower, Clarissa. Where are you? I... I don't know. I'm somewhere in Fort Milner. I don't know why I... I don't remember, like, the last hour. Jonas and Alex decide to go to the forest first to get Ren as it's kind of on the way and finally get to Clarissa as she sounded less distressed. On the way, Jonas and Alex lay out some theories on what might be going on, linking it all to the triangle in the cave. Arriving at the forest, they encounter a motorized bridge left which needs to be activated from the operating room. As they go to flick on the switch, the door suddenly closes with lights going off with a red light appearing. Tuning the radio to the right frequency makes a red scary entity appear in the darkness momentarily before disappearing, returning everything to normal, apart from a chair randomly appearing on their way. After this, Alex discovers that strange frequencies can be picked up at certain points of the island, which in a way display recording from decades ago, going all the way back to 1940s, which seems kind of odd. Using the bridge left, they travel to the other side of the forest. When Jonas starts seemingly trying to fill out the role of the new stepbrother asking about Alex and Michael, when she unveils that they used to be really close and good friends coming to the island a lot and exploring. You used to come here a lot as a kid, right? To the island. I mean, I mean, that's what Ren made it sound like. Yeah, with my brother. With Michael? Yeah? Like, with your mom and dad, or...? Isn't this kind of a weird time to be reminiscing right now? It's not. I'm not reminiscing. I'm just curious. So when Michael would babysit you, he'd bring you out here. That's nice of him. He could have just stayed home, you know? It wasn't like that. We were, like, best friends. It's not like he was being forced to do it. He wanted to do it. We liked hanging out together. Oh, I mean, I didn't mean... Yeah, yeah, of course. That's when something extremely odd happens with Alex and Jonas being kicked back to the beginning of this time period when they got off the lift with Jonas repeating the same question about Michael. This little time loop keeps on repeating a few more times with the abandoned tent getting a bonfire next to it as if convoluting time and space, depicting how people used to camp here with a ball appearing which is identical to the football Alex used to have, which gets kicked around on its own. Jonas takes a picture of this phenomenon in order to use this as evidence later in their journey when they see that a ghostly figure is standing behind. Repeating the loop some more, a loop then separates Alex from her reflection on a water, who tells Alex that Michael should stay with Clarissa despite Michael being dead already. This in a way hints that this might be a different version of Alex in a different dimension where Michael is alive and his fate depends on the action of the current Alex who manages to manipulate the past events and the past version of herself. At this time, Alex becomes confused which repeats the loop with Jonas reappearing when a tape player appears which Alex tunes finally freeing them from this time loop. Jonas and Alex then come up with new theories that this must be the doing of several ghosts who might have emerged as they have unfinished business in the real world wanting Alex to do something for them. As Alex and Jonas head towards the relay point, they find Nona on their way who is very spooked and scared, telling Alex and Jonas to stay back. Nona explains after the cave incident, Alex was terrifying and rude, bringing up Nona's dead grandfather, hence why she thinks she might be possessed. 
John asks Sink how shocked and shaken she is, instructs her to go to the Hard and Calm Tower to wait for them so they can catch up with her there after fetching Clarissa and Ren. As she does so, Alex and Jonas continue their journey, arriving at the relay point, seeing a communication house at the top of the hill. As they go inside, they see a shaken Ren waiting for them patiently, who explains how he blacked out. That's when the reality distorts once more, trapping Alex in another time loop where she only is aware of, with Jonas repeating the same thing over and over again. That's when they see Ren sleepwalking, not interacting with them at all, looking as if he's possessed. Alex is faced with two more tape players, which she fine-tunes, breaking the loop. Tuning to a tourist frequency about the island, Alex learns the island was gifted to Colonel Caleb Edwards in 1890 by Portuguese and Spanish explorers as a reward for his part in the Indian and American Wars, hence why the name of the island is taken after Edwards. Edwards changed the purpose of the island from mining by building Fort Milner in 1941 for World War II, with the island having different owners since then. This island has had many owners. Portuguese explorers, Spanish settlers, but few stayed long, preferring the ranch work offered by the mainland. After 1890, the island was gifted to Colonel Caleb Edwards for his part in the American Indian Wars, and he would lease it to several mining companies throughout the early 1900s. This relay station served as the center of a makeshift railroad that carted coal to northern and southern piers. When Edwards died, the government saw a hole in national security at the outset of World War II and decided to take control of the island once again, founding Fort Milner in 1941. Despite closing the loop, Ren doesn't seem to snap out, being even more possessed with glowing red eyes representing the ghostly entities with red glowing lights on them, possessing them, maybe the ghosts from the radio, the ghosts who act as an allegory to the Kanaloa epic. As Alex tunes the radio to different frequencies, Alex seems to be freed with a large gate triangle opening, with the ghosts communicating with Alex that it was difficult to talk through Ren and it's better as the gate is opened. In convoluted lines, these ghosts mention how they are many and that Maggie Adler had a hand in all of this, seemingly bounding them to the island who try to break free and be in the real world by using Alex and his friends as puppets, seemingly possessing them so they have a physical body. They simply mention that Maggie Adler was seemingly their target before, but now Alex is tagged. That's when they distort out of this reality with Ren reawakening when they hear Nona through the installed communication speakers in the island that she made it to the hardened tower. Ren decides to go to the comm tower to join Nona with Alex and Jonas continuing on their journey to save Clarissa. After some time managing to enter the fort, Jonas sees a cloudy glimpse of Clarissa going inside the room when he runs after her, getting trapped inside with the door shutting behind him. Yet again, the reality distorts with Alex's reflection in a mirror separating, telling her to stop Jonas from speaking to his mother, when Alex says his mother is long dead when the reflection disappears. That's when the door to the room opens with Jonas being unharmed. Jonas as a result being spooked takes a picture from the mirror, which unveils an entity with red glowing guys standing behind them, depicting how every single paranormal event is being caused by the ghosts in the other dimension. They suddenly see Clarissa enter another building, this time actually being Clarissa, when they enter the building, getting locked in with the ghosts possessing Jonas this time, asking three questions from Alex to see if she fits the bill for future endeavors which they act mysterious about. The third question asks a specific question to how many officers were killed in the USS Kanaloa submarine bombing, which reveals that 97 people overall died, of which 85 were officers, with the ghosts who are communicating with Alex being the presence of those killed officers, which they refer to themselves as the sunken, hence why Alex and Jonas saw themselves at the bottom of a sea with debris sinking, depicting the debris of the submarine which sank, resulting in the death of 97 people. The United States submarine Kanaloa is shown for the first time in Pacific waters patrolling for the enemy. Pacific waters patrolling for the enemy. Through the periscope, the commander looks out over the ocean's surface. Kanaloa was lost today, lost at sea near. Is this? Are you the dead officers? that sunk on the Kanaloa? We are uh, sunken. 
Alex does the radio frequency thing yet again to exorcise Jonas when they decide to go up to rescue Clarissa. Having a morbid vision of Clarissa dying, it soon revealed that it was nothing but a hallucination with Clarissa nowhere to be found. Jonas and Alex, left with no other choice, decide to reunite with Ren and Nona in the Hardened Tower so maybe they can find Clarissa together. On the way, Alex picks up a random frequency which unveils the atrocious war crimes Caleb Edwards committed, slaughtering hundreds of natives and doing what's so called the ethnic cleansing, which is unveiled to be a frequency from the sunken ghosts who agreed with Edwards horrendous crimes, referring to Alex as an ignorant person just like the natives who must be forcefully removed to honor the barbaric past traditions and crimes. The island is famously named after Colonel Caleb Edwards for his glorious and triumphant slaughtering of countless families during one of the great ethnic cleansings of the 20th century. The forceful removal of an ignorant people to make space for destined holders is a time-honored tradition in our still young country. And you will be a part of that heritage, Alex. Do not resist. It will be over soon. Alex and Jonas soon reach a blast shelter which is explained to have been built in case of emergency of the Catbird station in the bridge stand section of the island being targeted and destroyed, a specific communication station which would alert about any imminent foreign and airborne attacks. Reaching the hardened tower, they reunite with Nona and Ren when Ren informs them that his sister Ali worked in the island and delivered Maggie Adler's mail on a daily basis, and that's how he knows Adler has a boat which they can use to get out of the island. This leads to an argument between Ren and Jonas who don't agree on a plan when Alex decides to take Nona with her and fetch the key from the shop Ali used to work in which could potentially open Adler's gate. Reaching the shop Ali used to work in, they come across a possessed Clarissa, when the reality distorts with the group back together playing a game of truth or slap, this time seemingly all of it happening after the cave incident, when Clarissa drops hate bombs on Alex, attacking her by saying that she was the reason that Michael, her brother, died, as he was planning to leave town, when Alex convinced him to go swimming one last time together, even though she didn't know how to swim properly. This causes Michael to start drowning due to tides appearing, when Alex in horror clings onto a bowline, while a observing her brother slowly suffocate and sink underwater, losing his life. Clarissa keeps attacking Alex, calling her names, which reveals where her hatred and resentment towards Alex comes from, when Alex is starting to mentally break down, being thrown back to the current time with Clarissa being vanished yet again, depicting how the ghosts are trying to play a dirty trick on her so they can easily possess her and her friends. Everyone's asking me, I get to do the asking now. <laughs> Oh, guys, okay, I know you think we're still playing truth or slap or whatever, but this isn't real, so- Well, wait, Clarissa hasn't gotten a chance to ask something yet, so- Yeah, and you, of all people, should know what my question is gonna be, cause I'm not gonna waste it. Alex, what did you do? Explain why me and my best friend, and your idiot best friend, and your new stepbrother are all screwed- <sighs> Look, when we went into the cave, we found a thing, and I used the radio to somehow tune it in and- I think it jump-started everything. I see. Jonas, now you're seeing who you're stuck to until graduation. She creates chaos. She's a storm. Why? Why does it have to be my fault? Why does it have to be your fault? Are you kidding no, me? No, come on, Clarissa. Let's not do this right you're now. You're gonna learn, Jonas. I swear to God. The town looks at her like she has a red letter tattooed on her freaking forehead. And the giant, lit up, Christmas tree reason why is that Michael is dead because of her. Because of her. Like, do you understand who you're living with? It would take a very sick person to see it that way, and I would love to hear the explanation. Michael was gonna leave town. He was free, he was out of here, until this one convinced him to take her swimming for one last God knows what. And he drowned. He drowned in Horn Lake while this one could barely flap her arms. Clarissa. Ugh, she is a pox, Jonas. You weren't there. No one was there, so how the hell would you know? 
everyone knows. Everyone knows the freak sister who let her brother die while she clung scared to the bowline. Inside the shop, they managed to find a radio instead of a key, which has instructions of how to use it to open wave-assisted locks. Depicting that Adler's gate has a lock like that, which could be opened using this radio, having specific frequencies. Inside a box, they find some belongings of Maggie Adler, who has a letter written opening by how this island and its history is a massive lie. This letter expands on how she had many truths about the island, which she tried to conceal, thinking they are in the best interest of everyone. But as time passed, she starts to realize that she only made it worse hiding these facts, explaining that she has left several letters throughout the island which can be found using a specific frequency on the radio. The first letter explains how the Kanaloa submarine was not in fact destroyed by the Japanese forces during World War II, but instead it was a friendly fire who were accidentally shot as they went into the waters earlier than planned, as they were testing the capabilities of a developmental new nuclear reactor. As Nona and Alex decide to go to Adler's estate and take her boat, Alex has a blackout finding herself at a different time in the past, where she was tagging along with her brother Michael and Clarissa when he was alive. Going to the beach together, it shown how Clarissa was a much nicer person, who apologizes to Alex for tagging along as Alex was meant to spend this day alone with Michael. This reveals how the loss of Michael badly affected Clarissa and made her become so bitter. Clarissa leaving the two alone to get something, Michael asks Alex about what she thinks of her when Alex tells him to stick with her as she makes him very happy, which reminds her of the reflection which told her to tell Michael to stick with Clarissa, which hints out that maybe her actions in the past would change the future and even current time. Waking up back in the current time, Alex finds another letter by Maggie Adler who explains that she was recruited by the army, which explains that she was involved somehow in the sinking of the submarine. Managing to open the gate to Adler's estate and reuniting with Ren and Jonas, they enter the house to find the key to the boat when they see Clarissa sitting on a sofa very calmly, acting very strange. Clarissa joins the group in search of finding the key when Alex finds the key, going down so they can all escape the island when all of a sudden the reality distorts once more, with everyone apart from Alex being awake, with a possessed Clarissa urging her to go down to her. The ghosts possessing Clarissa say that Alex tuned in into their signal in the cave, hence why they targeted them, with now Alex being tested again to check her suitability. Engaging Alex in a game of I spy with my little eye, Alex manages to find the items as otherwise they would face grim consequences. The ghosts then speak through Clarissa that Maggie Adler and her friend Anna actually managed to communicate with the ghosts before, with only Maggie surviving, which after some time allowed the ghosts to find a way to escape with it being right now. The ghosts seemingly try to possess Anna, but as they did it too quickly, she died. But as of now, they learned to take their time, hence why they haven't fully possessed the group yet, waiting until the morning to do so, so they can stay within the buddies. The ghosts then reveal that in fact they didn't die, but that they had time till the dawn to perform some sort of ritual or maybe go through a portal to save themselves when the submarine exploded, which trapped them in a void since 1943, therefore being different transmissional beings than and just ghosts, acting as a parallel to the ocean god story where the spirits were spit out into the underworld. In the mirror, she sees her reflection once more, instructing her not to tell Michael to go to school, so maybe he would have a different fate than drowning. With that, the distortion comes to an end with Clarissa being gone yet again. Discussing the plan with the group, Alex explains leaving the island simply won't solve the issue and they need to find the resolution and possibly close the gate, otherwise Otherwise, as they are already infected by the ghosts or the entities, they would be possessed by the sunken even if they leave. After watching some documented videos from Maggie Adler, they realize how the gate could be closed. They need to go to the source where it was initially opened, which is the cave, with a specific frequency being needed to be dialed to close it. As the entry to the cave was barricaded after the incident when the gate was opened, they become left with no other choice but to use the blast shelter to get directly to the cave. On the way, Alex finds more secret letters by Maggie Adler, who unveils how Anna Shia was a really good friend 
and who died in their efforts of deciphering the messages of the ghosts from the sunken submarine. Maggie's obsession with trying to communicate with them and thinking it's them started with the horrible truth that it was Maggie's fault that the submarine was hit by friendly fire. She mistakenly reported the submarine to be an anomaly and maybe a foreign vessel, which made her feel a crippling guilt that haunted her, somehow trying to do whatever she can to bring them back, especially as she was forced to cover up the mistake and publicly label it as an enemy attack. More letters reveal that through her efforts to bring the crew back, she realizes that they had been corrupted in some way, not being the same crew anymore who don't even know what happened to them, who brutally and selfishly took Hannah, trying to possess her, who killed her by mistake. Maggie expands that she started to identify some of the spirits, one being Henry, which after endless research, realizing that they are not in fact dead, but the explosion of the nuclear reactor in the submarine possibly made a tear in time and space and dumped the crew into an interdimensional pocket, which affected the crew's mental stability and existence, reducing them into monstrous childlike beings who communicate through broken diction and games. She explains how both her and Anna entered the cave tuning into the right frequency which opened the temporal tear, the gate which she refers to as such, which absorbed her dear Anna, which might indicate that they were closer to each other than just friends, which ended with the gate almost fully closing, just leaving the triangle hue floating which Alex and Jonas stumbled upon. That's why Maggie decided to buy majority of the island with the inheritance she received from her father to stop anyone from visiting the cursed island. She boarded up the cave and forbid anyone from entering the beach so that no one would suffer the same fate that Anna did. It's revealed that Maggie was a communication officer who studied in the radio communication school in the island, who was on observation duty on the Harden Tower when she confused the signals as distress signals, instructing the bombing of the submarine which she was unaware of being in the waters. All of this weighs heavily on her, the death of 97 people in the submarine whom she tries to bring back leading to the death of her beloved Anna. Only realizing how monstrous and instinctual the spirits have become, being different versions of the crew, leading her to expose the truths on these letters, trying desperately to close the island, even stopping the opening of a museum. As Alex and Jonas try to rush to the cave to close the gate, the spirits become more hostile and threatening, intimidating Alex to choose between all of her friends and herself or Clarissa, telling her that all they need is Clarissa who despite being rude and mean to her, Alex makes no deal trying to save her. The spirits use visions to further scare Alex, showing how Ren could die including all of her friends when Alex becomes determined to save them all and find a way to leave this cursed island. Managing to get to the blast shelter after opening its door through Catbird Station, they come across Ren and Nona who announce that they are now dating, which reveals maybe Alex's first obnoxious betrayal telling Nona about Ren liking her actually worked. As they take another picture to commemorate this moment, Jonas and Alex go to the blast shelter bidding everyone goodbye, just in case if they don't make it back alive. As they proceed to pass through the shelter, a strange tape player appears, sounding like Jonas's deceased mother, seemingly a trick being played by the spirits. Remembering the reflection Alex had, she stops Jonas from speaking to her mother, which would have irreversible consequences, making Jonas disappear and maybe becoming absorbed by the spirits. Managing to go to the cave, they come across a badly possessed Clarissa, who speaks for the spirits, who explain what a horrible struggle it has been for them, being stuck in an absolute void with lifetimes passing right in front of him. They then proceed to make Clarissa disappear, refusing to let go. That's when Alex uses her radio to open the tear and face them head on to save Clarissa. As Alex opens the gate, she finds herself at the bottom of the sea when the submarine was bombed, which makes her go into a cliffside facing a possessed Clarissa. The spirits go on a typical long, evil monologue, engaging Alex in a conversation, distracting her and buying themselves more time, when they say that Alex cannot close the tear as Maggie already tried 
right but failed. That's when Alex notices that the representation of her friends are one by one appearing behind Clarissa, realizing that the spirits are actually absorbing them slowly, distracting her from closing the hole. The spirits scare Alex and offer her to leap through another portal that they open so that they can take Clarissa but cutting a deal that Alex would go free. That's when Alex quickly tunes into different frequencies with the radio, managing to close the hole before it's too late. Alex is then told doing this will save her friends but she would get trapped in the void, suffering every day when Alex decides to sacrifice herself to save the others. That's when Alex finds herself in an absolute void which quickly distorts finding herself to be the split image of herself, being the reflection she saw before instructing her to stop Jonas from speaking to his mother, telling Michael to go to school so he wouldn't go to New York and have the last swim with her when he drowns, and also give her blessings to Michael call to stake with Clarissa. This unveils how this distorted version of herself sent her these messages from the future, so another version of herself can change previous critical past actions affecting the current time and future. All of a sudden, the reality distorts once more with Alex finding herself back in time when she was in the house with Michael, giving her final blessings to stay with Clarissa and to stay to go to school instead of traveling to New York with Clarissa, who was the reason convincing Michael to leave. This causes a shift in time and space when Alex reawakens on the first ferry back to the mainland from the island, finding all of her friends including Clarissa back, but with one exception, that her brother Michael is also there, being well and alive still together with Clarissa who is not better anymore or resentful, being kind and happy. This reveals how Alex managed to close the hole successfully and somehow used the anomaly in the island in her advantage to manipulate the different versions of herself in the different dimensions and time to bring her dead brother back to life as he didn't have to have a last swim with Alex to commemorate their friendship before leaving town. Despite no one except Alex remembering the death of Michael and how he came back, they all remember the majority of the experiences they had with the spirits, even with the photographs they took being changed, depicting how Michael was with them all along, bringing them back to existence in a different version of reality. In the photos, Michael changes the position of Jonas, being Alex's brother, with Jonas's father never marrying Alex his mother and never becoming step siblings. They take a final photo to commemorate their friendship with all of them being happy. Alex mentions despite not being step siblings with Jonas, she still feels he's her stepbrother, even calling him her second brother in absence of Michael. Despite the ending having different variations, getting the best ending at least to my opinion, makes Nona and Ren stay together in a relationship, Michael coming back to life and still dating Clarissa, yet with Clarissa moving to New York, dropping out of college to work, with Michael still planning to move to New York to her after graduating. Despite all that, he's still happy and well, and of course, very alive. Jonas also doesn't disappear, which is a possibility, being really close friends with Alex who sees him as her other brother. Slowly, Alex unveils how as time passed, she started to forget about the island and their experience, starting to think about other matters in life such as education and work, until a point where she completely forgets about the island with the time and reality distorting, with Alex mentioning how it's the first time she's meeting this new guy called Jonas her new stepbrother trying to fetch him to go to the island together with Ren, which reveals how despite everything and managing to close the hole, the spirit still managed to distort reality and trap her in a loop, stuck forever, repeating the same thing. This brings to mind when the spirit said that nothing would change anything as it's been done multiple times before and that they are close into breaking into the real world and skipping the void. Therefore, they didn't talk about Maggie closing the hole, but that Alex had tried many times before in the previous loops with no success, coming back every time and reopening the hole with the spirits getting one step closer each time.
On the other hand, if Alex manages to find all the anomalies and letters in the island, replaying the game and going into another loop, she manages to plead with the still good spirit known as Henry, which was mentioned by Maggie multiple times in her letters. In here, the spirits inform Alex despite her efforts to send a message to herself, her own version in the beginning of the loop, who is yet to meet Jonas. It would be completely pointless, as she has tried so many times before. The spirits make a remark that this action would not not save her, which means it's possible a different version of Alex in a different dimension or loop could be saved, but not her current self. The spirits further continue that Alex's efforts in closing the hole and stopping the spirits from blooming using her and her friends will seal them with the spirits in a loop, never to end, dying with them over and over again, which depicts that Alex going back in time and saving her brother was nothing but a hypothetical situation. An after effect or a side effect of the hole closing, distorting time and space. You tried to send a message to yourself. Well, I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news, sweetie, but the Alex out there, this hypothetical innocent creature who has yet to meet Jonas or be scared or lost, even if she hears it, it won't save you. It never does. <laughs> Closing the hole with your stupid toy will spare your, your friends from our bloom, sure, but it will seal you up in here with us. You'll die with us, again and again. You can leave, you know, through the gate you opened. But you'll... you're still gonna take Clarissa? That's it? That's it? Do you want more? A better bargain? That's all you'll get. That's more than we ever had. How can I fix it then? Just just tell me how to fix it. I'm here. I'm in the, the past, for God's sake. I can't change this somehow? No, you can't change. Before, you can't change anything. Therefore, Alex finding herself on the boat, going back, never really happens and she never reaches the mainland. In fact, she dies, including her friends, every time she closes the hole, restarting the loop just to be back on the ferry, going back to the island to reopen the hole. The good ending where everyone is reunited and Michael is back from dead is only the dying and thrashing signals of the brain after death imagining things and the best case scenario in the worst situation. Alex never really goes back in time and never manages to change the future or the current events. She just imagines them and dies at the end. The spirits give Alex a final offer that they would let go of her and her friend if she lets them keep Clarissa, to which Alex still doesn't agree. Alex being left with no choice begs Henry Griffin to listen to her, an honorable crew member which changes the perspective with Henry appearing, telling Alex that their faces were the first things disappearing, then their names with the only thing left, the only thing that they cling on being their anger and fear. Henry says how Alex reminds them of Anna who died in vain and that they will keep on keeping their nature and letting them go. As a variation, Clarissa can make up with Alex and restore their friendship which makes her stay and study literature being closer to Michael. As a change of ending, talking to Henry, the loop resets and Alex is back on the ferry going to Edwards Island again. But somewhere in a different dimension, Alex is seen talking to Ren and Jonas deciding to take the ferry to the island. As Alex tunes into a frequency, she picks up another version of herself warning her not to go to Edwards Island and stay safe. This, in a way, spooks her, with Ren not believing her, but either way, saying that it's better to stay off the Forbidden Beach anyway, which was long ago barricaded by Maggie Adler. Who all decide to have a pizza instead and stay in, not knowing what a massive bullet they dodged, being free from an endless loop. I guess that means... <laughs> This unfortunately also means that Michael never is brought back to life and Clarissa keeps on being resentful against Alex. And this is only one version of Alex and her friends in a complete different dimension, while the original Alex that we play in the game is still stuck on a never-ending loop, trapped with the angry and resentful spirits of the sunken Kanaloa submarine.
And that's it for this video, folks. I truly hope that you enjoyed it as much as I did. It, I think, took me more than four days to make this video. So if you did enjoy it, make sure to stay tuned for more by hitting on the subscribe button and the notification bell. It's been your host, R, as always, and I will see you on the next one. Take care. <laughs>